Well, hello everyone, welcome again to Tim Time. This, uh, I'm going to turn it down so we're not listening to that noise. An old friend here on the bench, the old TSA 20. I've been getting some reports that people say there's a hum. And, uh, of course, I can't hear it, but uh, I said, well, let me take a look at it. So I'll show you. Now, I don't even have to turn the power on. I have the heater turned off for the tube. Turn this up. But I do have it turned on monitor. I don't know if you'll be able to pick this up. Okay. Funny thing is, same thing. That's me touching the mic. You can't see what I'm doing over there. But I'm touching the mic. So you might lead you to think that it's something on the mic that's possibly hot. Maybe the grind isn't working. I don't know. Uh, and I'll show you another thing. You hear it? Pull that up. Quiet. Again, something that makes you think it's definitely the microphone. We're off the mic. Easiest way to do some own testing. But I wanted to show you. Look how uh, over the years the uh, the white color has deteriorated on that um, to the point where it's brown and probably very brittle. But I've looked around and I, I've noticed these before. I never realized how dark that was. But uh, to see if I could get other. Um, pads for the switch, you know. But, uh, I mean, they still work, but anyhow, so uh, I'm going to do some own testing here in a minute. And as soon as I find things, I was looking at my computer, decided it wanted to restart in the middle of all this. So I said, well, I'll take the bottom off the mic while I'm here. So, in case you ever had one of these apart, that's what's in it. The actual switch is right here. Here are the wires come up here to the microphone and this is one of those microphones that has two different impedances. Okay, just wanted to clarify the actual uh, the actual uh, high and low impedance is up here on this mic. And pull that off. Let's see. Right now it's the red dot there goes to the red H. And if you have one of these 50s, MC50, you'll see that. But if you turn to the other side, there's a black L. And you can actually spin that red dot around so it lines up with the black L. And then this becomes a low impedance mic. Uh, but this radio takes high impedance, so we'll go back to the H. Make sure it's lined up. Yep, there it is there. Yeah, I thought that was kind of interesting. So down, the red dot there just lines up just to show you that that's where the, the plug-in point is. But while I had this, I thought it was kind of interesting. I turn it up and the noise is gone. The noise is gone. So... I'm going to check the wiring real good down below here. Maybe something jiggled around. Something might have been laying where it shouldn't have been laying. There's a lot of wiring there. So I'm going to actually pull this off for now. Just because I don't want it to fall and hit the ground. But uh, I'll look this over real good to see if we come up with anything. Maybe the radio just wanted a vacation. Okay, well, <laughs> the problem is not coming back. Not today, anyhow. Um, so, one thing I did notice on 28 megahertz, on CW, I'm only getting about 50 watts up. On the other bands, everything else is fine. 
on, let's see, sideband. It's a little bit lower. Yeah, I guess it is a little bit lower, uh, but it's only on 28. Yeah, I find a couple little anomalies with this. So we'll play with it and see what happens. Stay tuned. Okay, well since the other aspects of tuning on this thing seem to be fine, uh, the drive responds when I am on 28 megahertz and turn it up and down. I want to take the cover off and just take a look at it and make sure the drive chains and everything are okay. And then I want to take a look at the driver. I think I remembered reading somewhere that uh, if on any bands you can't achieve the full drive, and that's what I was getting, the drive was hardly even moving. Uh, they said to check the driver tube, which uh be interesting to see, because that's 28 megahertz, that's the highest it's going to be going as it starts to approach the uh, the UHF range. So I'm curious to pull that tube out and see what it uh, what it tests as. It may test as good, because I actually have another one. Yeah, when I bought this radio back in, I think, the late 80s, I, uh, the guy gave me some extra tubes. So I'm going to tear the cover off and we'll take a look inside. All right, so let's see. Here's the drive chain. You can see it going all the way across. It looks like everything moves nice and smooth. I was afraid that one of those gears or chains had broken. This will be the drive tube in here. I'll pull that out next. Uh, So we'll take a look at that, I'll pull it out and give it a, a test and see how it goes. Okay, in case you've never taken one of these out before, which I haven't, see this metal rib right here? That's a, uh, probably the grounding shield and it wedges itself in between the tube and the shield. And the shield's super tight on the tube. You can't move it. So what I'm doing is kind of prying them apart a little bit as I pull them out. And uh, we'll see what kind of picnic we have putting them back together when, when we put the new one in. But uh, anyhow, that's, that's how it works. I mean, I guess I could take this whole board out and unsolder that and do it on the bench. But this is too much fun. Okay, this is when you finally do get it out. As you can see, that's a pretty tight, I mean, it's not super tight, but you're not going to, when you figure you get that little piece of metal in there too, it's not going to pull apart real easily. So uh, anyhow, I'm assuming after I'd replace this, this tube, that I could probably, I was thinking even a pair of snap ring pliers, pull that apart like so, and uh, slide that back over it and then close it back up. But I'm going to test this in a tube tester and uh, see what it yields. BRB, as we say in the internet. All right, getting it back on wasn't quite as horrific as I thought it would be. Generally what I did was started the uh, tube from the back into the uh, metal can and then uh, just a little bit and then I slid the tab the, the grounding tab that comes off the board all the way in and I could feel the tube go past it and then I slid the tube all the way in and as you can see uh, I'll try to get you an idea where up in here it's snug up against the base and I took note I, this time I tried to leave it so the gap was open at the top instead of at the bottom because it did me no good at the bottom last time so anyhow we'll see how that works oh and by the way I did, did test the other tube the uh Tube's supposed to test at 500 what, micro Mohs, and it was about 750, but this one's about 1250, so we'll see if it makes any difference. Put the cover back on, not for any reason other than the speakers here and the wiring for the speaker connects to it. So rather than me prop it somewhere up, it just not pull it down, just sitting here. Just turn the heater on. We'll give it a couple seconds to heat up. Uh, 
you hear that still sounds fine like that's working now we'll go down and we're going to check the uh we'll go all, let me turn that on we'll go all the way from the very beginning um from the uh operator's manual and sideband that would be on ip send about 60 milliamps that's good uh then turn it to elk alc and we're going to put this on tune and we're going to peak the drive so you'll be watching this right here okay already much higher than it was yesterday it was barely moving yesterday um, so then from there what do we want to do uh, IP we're gonna dip the plate voltage so we'll put this back to IP here's the plate we're gonna get that kind of close to where we have to be and there we go so the next thing we want to do is now we're going to go to RF and we're going to turn this to CW and we're going to pe uh, peak the plate and the load. So, okay. So, according to the bird, I'm already showing about 90 watts. So there was, even though I believe that's a used tube, there's definitely a uh, increase in the power. So I'm going to go through it again real quick, just and peak on the watt meter. I don't know. I don't think you can see that back there. Probably not. Let me move this out of the way. And then that'll turn. Uh, I don't know if you can see it or not. All right, I got a 100 watt slug in there. Set on forward and let's see what we get. Okay, 80 watts. Uh, like I said yesterday, we were lucky to make it to 40 even. Let's just see what happens on sideband. On the old peak reader. On upper sideband, we'll use about number eight is the setting on that. We're into a dummy load, so. So it looks like it goes a little over 100. So we'll just check. I want to check the CW power. We'll check, throw it down on like 14. So there's a. Uh, we got a 14.2. Where you always want to go, you know, everything always seems to tell you to set up on 14.2 when you're doing the alignment into a dummy load. Okay. IP we already checked, we know we're good. We'll go to ALC and peak the drive. Actually you can you can actually hear when you're close to it. That should be close right there. I'm um, gonna turn this over to 14. So we're going to go down to tune, ALC, we'll peak the drive. Man, I was almost spot on. Uh, next thing we want to do is leave it there, turn it to IP, dip the plate voltage or current. That looks good right there. And now we're going to go to RF, which is... Uh, CW and RF and we're going to pick peak the load and plate. You can watch the meter there. Well already we're getting we're peaking past that so let me choose a different range. Alright. So that should be the doubler range so let's see it's a hundred. So it'll be two hundred. Yeah. Let me just peek this out real quick. All right. I'm gonna 
through it on the 500 range so you can see because I know you can't see all the way over there. So the 500 range, the 10 would be 100. So it looks like it's going through about 110, 115. Now look. Same. Same setup. Hello. Okay, so again, remember the 100 is actually one thought, or the 10 is actually 100. Hello, hello. So it's running right around 100. Perfect. Probably goes up a little higher than that, but. Uh, and that's with that set, that's set at 7. So, I'm sorry, that's, that's the microphone jack, I'll show you. What that was set at. Right there at 7. And uh, in an earlier video, we actually worked on that, the, the mushy audio bulletin, where it said to replace those transistors. All right, so we know that, <coughs> excuse me, the driver tube definitely affected our, our power uh, mainly on 10 meters. And even though the tube tests good, kind of good, uh, it still caused a problem. And that's what I had read. A lot of people said that... Um, not a lot of people, a couple of people said that uh, if you're showing a depletion in drive on any band, replace the tube. Uh, unless it's something like, and we, we looked at the chains that drive everything, and there's some couplings there that break from time to time. But you could tell that, like I showed you before, go back to 28. You can hear the drives working fine. It's, it's tuning me for the band, it's just the transmit isn't uh, doing what it should do. And again, yesterday, and I don't know if I had it on film, but when I would try and peak drive, it was just barely moving, and now today it's better than half the scale. One thing I did want to add here, I, I noticed too, some people had, had put notes about uh, checking the IP current when you had it all tuned in and 225 milliamps was the magic number and uh, I'm going to zoom in and show you. I went back to 10 and uh, well, we can look over at our meter there. I'll zoom into that. And remember again that, well I'll turn it so that 100 is 100 and you'll see when I go right to about 90. When I come over here and we look at this will be the IP scale. There's 200, 250, 300, so somewhere between the 250 and the 200. And we're on IP. We'll turn it directly, exactly 225 for the plate current. So, okay, so that was a success in case anybody ever has issues. It looks like driver is going to be your main your main fault so uh, make sure to grab one of those and I saw Tube Depot has them for a fairly decent price I think it was about 15 bucks and in the years I've had this I've never replaced this obviously so this is actually this is actually the uh, the one that came with it I would assume because it it says Japan on it and these were Kenwood's made in Japan I don't know maybe the guy bought another one anyhow uh, well that's about it. Thanks for watching.